Hello, hello, YouTube world, and thank you so much for tuning in to the, the Mobility, Mobility Bros. Bros. How you doing? If you don't know, I'm your boy, Cliff Joseph, a fitness essentials expert, CEO. I've been doing training for over 20 years, working with all sorts of athletes and for all ages. And I'm here with my hostess with the mostest, Ron Hilton. How are you doing today, Ron? What's going on, team? How are we doing? We're doing Having a fantastic. fantastic day. We have this amazing guest, and really, uh, uh, Nancy Chu, and we're excited to interview her today. We are. Thank we you. are. Every day, we every time you see us, we talk about a couple of things. We talk about uh, human mobility. We talk about athletic mindset. We talk about the pain reduction and pain management of our clients and members and ourselves. We also talk about the thoughts and processes of practitioners, how they think about program design, massage therapy, chiropractic work, and the mindset of our clients and our members and what they're going through. We share this for you so that you can get value, awesome value from 20, 30 plus years of expertise between me and Ron. It's probably 40 years of expertise. And when we bring on amazing guests, we highlight what they're doing in the world and how they're spreading their magic and health and wellness. And today we are excited to introduce Nancy to you. She is doing some amazing things. Ron, Tell us more about Nancy, man. How do right, you so know? How, Nancy, what's she Nancy's doing? awesome. We connected in the 2021 Olympic trials. Probably hands down one of the most um, amazing phenom, um, excuse me, chiropractics I've ever, chiropractors I've ever seen and her style of chiropractic. So I'm getting a little bit of her background. Five years experience, diagnosed and treatment, active lifestyle by utilizing applied kinesiology, kinesiology active release techniques, diversified chiropractic manipulation, neuro uh, emotional techniques and uh, fascial distraction model. Um, she has attended several seminars, uh, active release techniques, fascial distraction model, full body functional taping, um, tooling, full body, American Chiropractic Association Sports Counseling Sports uh, um, Symposium. Um, uh, uh, is your company, is it active performance? Is it correct? Is that your company? Activate Performance, Activate yes. Performance. Mm -hmm. She's the CEO mm -hmm. and head uh, chiropractor of Activate Performance. Um, mm -hmm. She has worked with men and women outdoor uh, NCAA, NCAA championships. Um, and we have, we connected during the trials, but she has worked with USATF and uh, at the Prefontaine Outdoor Cup, several outdoor national championships um, and national junior championships. And um, she is, um, she worked at the NFL Combine. Her background, as far as education, she graduated from Palmer West Chiropractic College and a bachelor's degree in art and uh, cognitive uh, psychology. Is psychology? Is psychology? Yep, yep, yep. You got it. Nice. Yeah. All right. So it's thank you, always, yeah. you. You got my whole resume. Holy. I know. I know. I like. I do all kinds of highlights and stuff. Make sure I break it down. So, so I want to kick it off with the first question. You know, what got you into chiropractics? Oh man, um, I don't have any crazy story. My patients ask me this all the time, and I'm almost embarrassed to say it. But I was such a weird child. I like. My parents are like immigrants. And so they basically told me that I would have to pay for my education. And so I was like, okay, hey, whatever I'm going to do, I'm, I better like it. You know what I mean? And so I like starting in like junior high, I started shadowing a bunch of different jobs and talking to different people about their profession to see what I would like. And honestly, I've shadowed, I knew I wanted to maybe be like a teacher or like do something in rehab or I definitely wanted to work with people and so um I always thought about like physical therapy for some reason and so I did a bunch of shadowing work with physical therapists and from there I was like okay hey, like this is I love this it comes natural to me and uh, at the time my mentor had told me that if he could go back he would do chiropractic instead of physical therapy just because on a business standpoint um you're not bounded by insurance as much um you can start your own business i know <laughs> and um and he just really appreciated the like the adjustments the soft tissue and therapeutic exercises so having to have the combo of all of those like I was able to see that patients were getting better faster. Mm -hmm. And I just really appreciate the fact that like, you know, 
people come and see me and we build a relationship, that's really important to me. I'm a big people person. So um, it's a, it's nice to be a part of yeah. my clients' journeys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I got that from you. I said, the first time I met you, we hit it <laughs> off. I mean, you yeah. connected and uh, every time I come out, it's like, we always, we always kick it. So it's yeah. like, we got a really yeah. good, I love your personality, Nancy. I mean, Appreciate you. You too. I mean, I love hanging out with other practitioners and patients and everyone. So it, I think it's a big team effort and I don't discriminate one like rehab method over another, you know? That's fantastic. Yeah, I think we all need to come together so that the mm -hmm. client gets the best help possible. And you have good people that love what they do, that have, you know, searched to make sure they love what they do then you get the best of that person. And that means you get the best treatment from that person. So that's exciting. Now you mm -hmm. mentioned a couple of amazing things. One thing that rang my ear is that you have immigrant parents. I also mm -hmm. have immigrant parents. So where are your parents from? Where, where's your nationality? Yeah, my mom's from Vietnam and my dad's from China, but he immigrated to Vietnam too. So we are more Vietnamese cultured. So yeah, that's what about you? Oh, my mother's Jamaican and my father's Antiguan, so Caribbean. Oh. American, yeah, same culture, kind of change and figuring out things. And uh, the the next yeah. thing you said was they're like, you got to figure out how to pay for college. So yeah, um, what do you think the state of chiropractic is today versus when you were going to school? And and what things do you are you really excited about seeing in chiropractic work today? Yeah, that's actually such a great question. I was talking to some of like the newly grads that came out or like even my mentors. I think um, it's t it's you really need to love chiropractic to be a chiropractor these days because it's so expensive. I mean, when my teachers and my mentors were going through school, they were saying that like it was like $2,000 a quarter or something like that. Now new grads are coming out with 250 plus thousand dollars like $250,000 or more um, is like the average cost of chiropractic school. And I think when, when I was going out of school, and I think when my mentors were going out of school, you either had to start your own business and, or work for yourself, basically. Like, I think for my generation, we had the opportunity to have like to be an associate, but my mentors were like, they just had to start their own business type of a thing. And so their mentality is like they had to work hard. Um, they they almost feel like if they're going to give you an associate, they're giving you something like you didn't have to start on their own like they did. Mm -hmm. And so the industry has changed. Like in California, I think the average uh, the average rate that you'll get paid as a chiropractor when you leave is like sixty k, which isn't a lot. Like especially in I'm in the Bay Area. Like, I think like $100,000 considered poverty over here. So it's a, it's a yeah. struggle. Yeah, um, and, um, and I think like a lot of the doctors like the, like that are hiring associates have the view that, you know, you're a doctor now, other like MDs have uh, like residency programs where they overwork you, underpay you. Yes. And so they treat us like that. Right. Um, but then so obviously I think like anyone that graduated around the time I did or before me had to go through that struggle. And I think that um, a lot of chiropractors, when I see them, it's like, we don't get business school training, right? Mm -hmm. So people try to start businesses and then they're so great as a practitioner and they care so much about people, but they don't have that business side of them. And so then their business don't do well, or it's like the, there's the people that are the business side, but they're like, more business than patient care or something like that. And then, then you find some people that can do both. But um, I see that struggle a lot. And then now the new grads, um, fortunately, are able to join corporations, which I think is awesome. They get benefits, they get paid like up to six figures a year, newly grad. But I think with working in corporation, you get stuck into the rack'em and crack'em world yeah. where it's high volume. And it, you don't learn so much soft tissue or diagnosing or learning how to start your own business. Um, so it's just like, it, it's tough. It's like, a, it's really hard to find practitioners that are able to have a great business and do great work. And then um, the new trend, I feel like, of the rack'em and crack'em or corporation world uh, makes it tough for 
chiropractors to really show their ability of what they're capable of. I think in my practice, my my patients even call me their physical therapist, massage therapist. I'm like, no, like I'm a sports chiropractor. We yeah. are, we are yeah. we're able to do all of this. It's just that, you know, just the way that the industry has been, it's just, you see the rack and crack them and stuff like that. So um, I, I'm hoping to change that trend a little bit more where people understand that chiropractors are able to do a lot more than just rack them and crack them or just be insurance and just have that high volume practice type of a thing. I love uh, that. Well, That's let me solid. ask you, cause I, you're, yeah. your style of chiropractic, I have not seen anywhere, like legit anywhere. <laughs> like you have like, it, it's yeah. like head, shoulders, knees and toes. Knees and toes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, can you share a little bit more about your style of chiropractic and what makes it so different? Um, and I, yeah. I noticed when I come out West, a lot more, not just you, but I noticed some other chiros get a little bit more of the soft tissue work, which here on the East Coast, that doesn't even happen. Really? Really? At all? Really. Even if they're oh. a sports chiro? Nope. Doesn't it's, happen. It's very rare so. that I've found some people that I talk to that are very specific, um, up northeast up in um like franklin township a little bit there's there's one or two people that i've talked and i've been in, in this industry for 20 years mm -hmm. that actually have done soft tissue work or had the clients do corrective exercise and they were my clients so they would go in and my and my client would say oh the chiropractor loves what we're doing because they are in alignment with what the program is for the corrective thing mm -hmm. that we're trying to correct the imbalance or the 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 um you know hyper functioning back or something that's going on that's causing pain and we're trying to reduce sciatic pain so we're doing things to work that muscle um but it's very rare i mean i don't really hear it often yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Sure, and, and is it just like full spine like or extremity work i feel like that's like a big like difference between sports chiropractors and then just straight chiropractors, I guess, or traditional as well. Yeah, we'll so I'm contracted. Out of, yeah, so I, I'm contracted at a chiropractic office, and I and I'm contracted, mm. uh, and I've been at this office for ten years, and they're old school chiros, right? So yeah, minutes on the table. You have one chiro; he is a little bit more up to like using tools, like yeah, he's doing PMF. Um, he's using like he he bought a neat uh, extraction machine, like. So he's oh. doing like all these other things, but as far, and he's using that, I actually kind of hate Activator. it. Activator. The click click. It's been that freaking thing, girl. I can't stand my, it. <laughs> my patients call that like the staple. Like, <laughs> the staple. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, okay, like, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, but anyway, it's, it's cool. So yeah. he's more into that. And um, the other Cairo, he's very old school. I mean, he, he does use a Cox machine. Um, okay. And, yeah, so he's more into that with, with okay. you know, but other than yeah. that, you know, like how you do like the neuromuscular and the response, like why is it that you do that? What, what makes that, like why yeah. is that? Yeah. Honestly, I like didn't want to love it. Like my mentor, like, uh, I was like, this shit looks like magic or like a trip, you know what I mean? Like, 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 what is like magic. Yeah. Rod is always and, about <laughs> Yeah. And so, um, my mentor was you know, doing that. And he taught me everything, which I'm really appreciative of. Um, but it's basically muscle testing, like, okay. it just makes the most sense to me. So you're muscle testing an individual muscle away from a whole muscle group. We know that our bodies are the best compensators, athletes are the best compensators, right? Like, so when you're doing something, you use a whole muscle group to do it. I want to see which muscles are actually working and which ones aren't. So I'll isolate every muscle away from every muscle group to see which one's actually working and you'd be surprised at how weak like your muscles be instantly when we just isolate maybe like a psoas away from the entire hip flexor group you know what I mean okay. so um it just makes the most sense to me it's like okay like I just want to go and find which muscle is actually the one that's working which one isn't I want to find the joint that's working which one is it and then it tells me exactly where to go and then testing it again I feel like tests me and educates the patient because then I can say, yo, like this one's not working. Um, we need to figure out why I give the explanation. And then I either do soft tissue taping, cupping, whatever, or do a manipulation to yeah. turn it back on. Right. Um, and it tests me, like say I get an adjustment and you hear the noise and it's great. 
and I test it again and it's still off, I'm like, oh shit, I, did, I got the wrong segment. I need to go back and get the right one. So right. I, it, to me, it just makes like the most sense. And I feel like it's a great educational tool for the patients as well. And it's one of those things where I really don't have to explain what I'm doing because they can feel that they're weak there. You know what I mean? And then that they can go strong again. So um, I'm basically stressing the muscles and the joints and the body in a way that you would do naturally in life but in a controlled setting I feel like so um I'm just obviously we want your muscles to be working with at like any speed any like uh you want to be able to adapt really quick right so um I'm making sure that you're able to even like turn it on type of a thing it's really hard to explain like through the camera without having someone and yeah, showing I, I, you but I, yeah. I know but, but here's the thing I see you yeah. work I can visualize you yeah, yeah. What talking about it, yeah, you should and I do, create, yeah. create a course for massage therapists for what you do like that would oh. be that would be freaking awesome like i'm serious yeah. like i do yeah, yeah. dumb it down a little bit for massage therapist yeah you'll do that because that, that'd be amazing yeah i think i think some massage therapists have been doing it a little bit more too it's called applied kinesiology i put i feel yeah. like everyone puts their own spin to it i definitely put my own spin to it and it's been working for me and i think I don't know, like there's obviously the physical body form. And it's weird for me to say this because I'm so evidence-based. Like when I first got out of school, I was like, everything needs to be evidence-based. Like you would not see me like doing anything other than that. And this is almost like, I think it's controversial because it's uh, people will say muscle testing is like different between every practitioner and da 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 da. But, um, but it's really been working for me and I've like really honed it down to my own style and like, now you can see me. I don't. I don't know if there's something with like energy work or like vibrations around us. Who knows, right? But I think there's a big encompassing thing with like full physical body, like energy and all that stuff. And it feels like um, it's been really resonating with me and helping with my patients. But yeah, I'm big on evidence based. This is like sometimes a little controversial, but you know, it's it's been working, and I like you can feel it and you can see it. I mean, even my athletes like when they go weak, they're just like, try, do it again. You know, they're so competitive. Like, no, you're, you're tricking me. Do it again. I'm strong. I swear, you know? And it's like, no, like, I'm, I'm not trying to trick you. I'm like, strong, this is literally your body. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. it. I love it. Because it, what it sounds like to me is that you focus on getting to the root cause of the problem. Yes. The way you get to the root cause of the problem is through kinesiology. And yes, I do believe our body con con conducts energy. 101 percent mm. we feel it when we go into those whooshy circles and no one's mm -hmm. touching anyone but everyone feels the ball between each other and like mm -hmm. energy is real yeah. energy yeah. is what we consume and call calories energy is mm -hmm. what we absorb in vitamin d when we walk out into the sun you know um exactly. energy is the atoms and the protons and the neutrons that vibrate that lets us see what we see in the world so mm -hmm. i do have this whooshy part of me spiritual yeah. part of me that connects with the energy of people and the energy around me. And so it sounds like what Ron's saying is you have a specific technique where you're tapping into um, finding where people are weakest and you're able to isolate to, to understand just for everybody watching. Yeah. Know, to try to find your psoas just by grabbing your butt cheek is not easy. Okay. There's a <laughs> lot of muscles over there by that glutey booty. But she's uh -huh. able to isolate specific muscles in her hip to figure out if those muscles are overactive, working too hard, uh, overcompensating. What that means is that the body is going to find a way to do it, even if it shouldn't, even if it hurts you, mm -hmm. even if it throws off your walk and your limp and everything like that. And correct that issue because she knows how to get exactly to the root cause, test if it's weak, and then do things to make it active. So this is very different than laying down, getting cracked for 15 minutes, holding, getting stretched yeah. by the torture. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, see you next week, two times a week for 15 minutes. This takes time. Yeah. This takes energy. This takes one-on-one -on -one attention. And mm -hmm. that is something that not many chiropractors do, which is what makes Nancy so special and an Olympian in a sense, right? So you've worked with Olympic athletes. You've worked with... <laughs> you know, some really strong, really powerful human beings. Um, what type of struggles do you have or did you have any struggles getting involved in that environment and not just being, yeah. a, you know, a crack em type of chiropractor, but 
going this step further to help them understand how to be better and how to move better with all of their muscle groups? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think in my industry, I'm like a sports chiropractor. And so like, uh, it's dominated with males, like strong males. And you see like, in a lot of sports teams, like, you know, sometimes females aren't welcome into the locker rooms unless you're working with like female sports and stuff like that. So um, I feel like, uh, look, just the struggle of just being in the sports chiropractic world as a petite female is like something that I think is definitely new and people don't see all the time. So that's one thing. And then um, I think, like I said, I think some people don't believe in the applied kinesiology or muscle testing as much. And so that's a, another struggle too, is just trying to get people to understand exactly what we're doing and like showing them that this isn't woo woo or this isn't magic. It's literally like a, my way of diagnosing and a good way of diagnosing. Um, and then uh, those are probably like the biggest things, but I don't know if it's just like, you know, when I go to places, like I actually work with Stanford right now too, like with USA track and field, Stanford, whatever, I think just showing my work, like making the athletes happy and like um, having the athletes show that like I'm an attribute to why like they are performing well um, kind of shuts everyone down. Right. Like, I don't care if you like me. I love everyone. Like I'm a big people person. Like, you know, like every time we go to USA track and field, I'm always trying to get everyone out at the end of the night to like, you know, shoot the shit, grab a beer, whatever, you know? Yeah. But, um, are you going out? <laughs> I'm like, I'm yeah. tired, Nancy. You going out? I'm like, I guess <laughs> <Yeah>. so. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. So, so I think like, uh, I just, so yeah, I wish I have my person, like uh, being someone that loves to be social with everyone and then also being able to like make the athletes happy. I think just like, that's it. Like, I don't need to say more. I don't need to do more. And so that's been really helpful. Like um, just having my athletes love what I do has been a big way to just be like, okay, like no challenges there. You know, I mean, at first, you know, everyone's looking at what you're doing. Like, what is this, what is this lady doing, doing all this like crazy muscle testing and stuff. But once the athletes get out and they're happy and they tell everyone, I mean, that's, that's it. What it's all about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That sounds like I do work. I stand on business. Like, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Check me out. I stand on yeah. business. No, that's yeah. phenomenal. I love your confidence because, you know, you don't think about it, but yeah, chiropractic work at that high level, you have these huge human beings and you're a petite lady, like you mentioned, and you're going in there and you're doing this muscle testing and you're taking your time to find and diagnose things. You're not rushing it. And mm-hmm. it's such a benefit to the athlete. And it's very similar to kind of your story about, you know, going to internships, checking things mm-hmm. out, making sure you like what you're doing. And then making that commitment to it and having the mentors mm-hmm. and the people in place to make that work for you. That's phenomenal, Nancy. So, uh, thank um, you. So are are you also a family? Like, what's the family life for you like? How do you juggle family and business yeah. and entrepreneurship and Stanford? It's, How does that whole thing work? It's pretty crazy. So I actually got engaged and married this last year. We're planning our wedding right now. So it's awesome. a little stressful. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, no family yet, but I definitely want to have kids. And, um, I think right now I'm talking to a lot of other female practitioners and how they make that work. So I think just having a good repertoire of people and support is important. Um, business, I honestly, am just so thankful. I had so many patients follow me from my previous practice to the point where, yeah, where I just, like, I honestly am not seeing new patients. I don't need to because um, I have the same people, which helps so much because I honestly love everyone that comes in. Obviously, they choose me. I choose them. So, um, like, we vibe with that energy. They know that, I, like, have the type of work that they want. And, like, I just love them as people. So, it's fun every time I go into work. So, that puts a lot of stress out. And I also was just, like, timing, I guess, was really fortunate. Like, I think right now in the Bay Area, there's a lot of layoffs and there was a couple of my patients that were like, Nancy, I got laid off and I like would love to support you. And so I like they were like my business people. They literally like did all my operations, um, like did everything for me so that and they set everything up and at a very cheap price, which I'm so like thankful for. Selena, shout out to you. <laughs> um, to you. But yeah, <laughs> but it was just like so many people so many of my patients were just so supportive like Nancy I have an extra laptop I have this you need to use it like you just like it just really was like I felt the love I felt like this is what I was supposed to do and 
they really allowed me just to like come into work and be a doctor and not have to worry about anything else really. So um, I just, that made it really easy for me. I've, I'm in a very fortunate situation. I don't think a lot of people can say they can start a business. Like I literally was at, with USA Track and Field the next, like the weekend before I started my practice and my team was just doing everything for me. I came into work. I just like my schedule was full. They had like everything set in place and I just like rolled. So it was, it was really, really nice. And then um, with Stanford, same thing. Uh, Kevin, who was the athletic trainer at Stanford recruited me and he made everything really easy for me. I didn't have to deal with anything. I just showed up, had my, had my athletes and here we go type of a thing. But obviously it's a lot of time commitment doing everything and overseeing everything. But I think, if you have that hustle personality, you know, like you make it work like you guys, you know, you make, yeah. you make shit work. Yeah. 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 I got so. picked up by a WNBA here in Connecticut. So I, it's Ooh, like, yeah, it's there you go. Thing. So my final question for me, um, what are some big goals and dreams you have moving forward in your, in your chiropractic business? Yeah, honestly, I'm just like taking any opportunity that comes my way. I like didn't know if I wanted to be in sports even, but like I, I'm here and I really love it. Um, I'm yeah. starting to get uh, recognition from other sports and being contracted by them. So I'm um, just experiencing what sports I want to be into. But at the end of the day, like I said, like I'm ready to be have my start, my family and everything. And I don't know what that means for me as like a female because so much of my body is my work and I might I might you know have to take some time off and so um we'll see what happens there but I know I'll always have my business and I'm actually the first and only chiropractor that works with student athletes at Stanford and so I'm hoping that you know my presence there will open up a gateway so that other chiropractors can get in there um and just you know try to be a positive impact into the chiropractic field and show that we're a lot more than just the rack'em and crack'em or try to ex like, you know, have chiropractors know that, you know, I get it. The whole business and corporate world is nice. You get benefits, you get money right away, but um, it can lead to burnout if that's like what your, if it's just money motivation or whatever, you know, so um, trying to get mentor other chiropractors to diagnose and to do soft tissue and not use just like the grass and tools or whatever, you know what I mean? Like get your hands in there and feel and that's how like, that's how a patient can tell if you're a good practitioner or not. So just trying to trailblaze my way through. We'll see where, <laughs> where I go, but that's starting amazing. small. <laughs> Nancy, you are an amazing disruptor. I appreciate how you shake up the industry, the way you vision chiropractic work, your passion, and, and what you're bringing to the table. People are extremely lucky. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Um, please let us know, let anyone know how they can get in touch with you, how they can find you, um, what your socials are. Oh, great. Okay. So I am the worst millennial. I do not do any social media, even That's though good. I should. Right. <laughs> but uh, my website's oh, I'm Activate Performance. So it's www.activateperformance.com. Feel free to email us, contact us, and we'll get back to you with any questions or concerns or comments or even if you want to get in or just talk. I'm always willing to do anything to help out the public. So awesome. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, my thank you so much comment. for having me. Thank you All so right. much for well, being here. All right, yeah, close it out. Well, you guys to stay awesome. Keep stepping greatness. Be legendary. And thanks, Nancy, for being on our show and having an amazing time. Thank See you next you. Monday. Thank you.